Hello, let's do an example showing how the cost curves are derived uh, using a table. You might be given a function and you can use calculus to figure that out, but uh, here I've got some uh, cost data. I've got variable cost, I've got fixed cost, I've got total cost. It's important to memorize all of these, the formulas for them. You can kind of think through them too. Um, total, and then I've got output over there. So total is um, just adding up the costs. So the formula for total costs is total cost equals fixed costs, which don't change, plus variable cost. Um, the thing to remember about fixed costs, they don't change in the short run. Okay, that's a delta. Uh, the variable costs do change. You could be given some kind of information, maybe uh, some kind of costs uh, associated with raw materials or something like that, electricity. Uh, labor costs or something like that. Here I've, here I've already derived them. So um, let's go through that. Then uh, average fixed cost is just averaging, right? So it's fixed costs divided by quantity equals average fixed cost. Now you may be given one of these. So maybe you're given the quantity and the average fixed cost. You can algebraically derive the fixed cost from that. Or you've been given the fixed cost and you've been given the average, fi average fixed cost then you can figure out how, how, many, how much the quantity is. Average variable cost, same deal. It's just variable cost over quantity. And then average total cost is the total cost number over the quantity. So not too big a deal. Marginal cost is the change in, in total cost over the change in quantity. So that's going to be important here. Um, here I've gone up by tens. So it's always going to be uh, in this example whatever the change in total cost is over 10 because that's what we've done here okay so uh, here we know the total cost so to fill in our chart here um, we don't know the fixed cost yet and we know the variable cost so the first one the variable cost is zero so if this is zero this is 50 this has to be 50 so that if you want to think through this that maybe represents some machinery or something like that and the thing about fixed cost is they're always the same so you can just fill it in they're not going to change. They'll change in the long run if you want, um, but that's a different, uh, different, different way of thinking. Okay, so we've done 50 all the way down. Those look like S's, but whatever. Um, then I'm going to just add uh, to get total cost. And now I've got fixed cost, always 50, and then I've got the variable cost here. So I can fill that in: 80, 100, 30, 70. 220, 280, 350, 430, and 520. Okay, so now I've got really all the information I need for the rest of the table. Um, let's do average fixed cost next. So uh, I've X'd out those. These don't really matter. Um, you know, if you're really into math, I guess you could get some kind of undefined number, but um, life's too short for that. We're, we're concerned with the production schedule. So the fixed fixed cost, average fixed cost, the formula here is 50 over the quantity, which is 10, which is 50 over 10, uh, which is going to be 5. Okay. And the next one is 50 over 20, which is 2.5. The next one, now I'm going to start using my calculator here, is 50 over 30, which is like, we'll call that $1.67.67. Uh, next one is 50 over, uh, over 40. You got a buck and a quarter. Okay, so you should get the idea how I'm doing this, and you can fill in the rest of the calculator if you want. Oh, this last one's one, because it's 50 over 50. Um, now we start getting numbers that are a little bit less than one. So that should make sense. This this number is going to decrease uh, the more that we produce, because we're averaging something that doesn't, doesn't change, and I'm changing the denominator. Next, average variable cost, so you can do the rest on your own. Uh, average variable cost is the variable cost over the quantity, so... Uh, the first one is 20 over 10, which is 2. The next one is 30 over 20, which is uh, $1.50. Next one is 50 over 30, or really 5 over 3. K 
again we got 1.67 just coincidental um, next one is oh I can do that one 80 80 over 40 is 2 uh, next one is 120 over 50 12 over 5 is 2.4 so you can keep doing these just plug them in and fill them in average total cost so now we're using this column here so average total cost I'll just use green because whatever uh, 70 over 10 so that's 7 then 80 over 20 is 4 100 over 30 which is really 10 over 3 is that 3.3 yep so three dollars and thirty three cents then I got 80 over 40 so that's 2 I got 120 over 50 or 12 over 5 I saw that before that was 2.4 Okay, so you can keep doing these and derive all of those. Um, finally, the marginal cost, the formula is right here. Okay, so um, the units are important here. So it's the change in total cost. Now, since this column doesn't change, if you want, you can just look at this column because these the change here is going to be the change here because the change here in the variable cost is what caused the change to total cost. So either way it doesn't matter okay so um, first one we've got a change of 20 over 10 we've got 2 the next one we've got a change of 10 over 10 and we've got 1 the next one we got 20 over 10 we got 2 the next one I got 30 over 10 which is 3 40 over 10 which is 4 50 over 10 which is 5 60 over 10 these are going to keep going okay and those are the marginal costs so those are rising okay um, so you can work those out on a calculator or plug them into Excel let's let's graph them here I've I've already done this um, so these are the same numbers here I got up there um, and let's just see what the cost curves look like see if see what the relationships are supposed to be here so I'll do um, we'll do average fixed costs in red and how big is that okay we'll make that a little bigger so uh, when the output is 10 this is in um, oh that shouldn't be hundreds that should be tens okay sorry about that there we go uh, anyway so when this is quantity on this x-axis and price on the y-axis uh, when the price is, or sorry, when the quantity is 10, the average fixed cost is 5. Then it goes to 250, 167, sorry, uh, buck and a quarter, a dollar. 0.83, oops, right there. Point six three, oops, keep doing that. And nineties point five six, and finally ten is this. Okay, so we've got this downward function here whoops well let's do this just draw a line a little bit better hopefully I'm not as shaky this time okay this is average fixed fixed cost and if I continue this you can see it's going to continue to go down um, till it gets really close to zero right so the more I produce Less those average fixed costs are going to matter. All right, next we'll do. Uh, we'll do them in blue here. We'll do average variable costs. So at uh, ten here, we've got this, and at twenty, we've got a buck fifty. At 
thirty. We've got a buck sixty-seven. Oh, so that's a buck fifty. So it's actually the same point right there. Um, Forty is back up to two. Fifty is two forty. Okay, so this one is the average variable cost. Okay, it's coincidental. Well, it'll always cross it, but it's, um, it's coincidental to cross it at the same point there. All right, let's do green for average fixed costs. So average fixed cost is going to be seven. Uh, then we've got four. And then we've got. 3.3 and then three and a quarter. Oh, I think I did that one wrong. Okay, I was on three. Figure out there. Okay, then three twenty five. Three forty, three sixty seven, four, and eight, four thirty eight. Seventy-eight, five twenty. Okay, now this is the average total cost. This is really the one we care about because it's the one that gives us profit here. It's average total cost, and um, what you'll notice is that average fixed cost plus average variable cost is going to equal the average total cost. Okay. Um, another way to look at it too is the distance between the average total cost and the average variable cost can be the same distance as the average fixed cost and uh, the zero on your graph. So you can you can actually add those up. Okay, finally I want to do marginal cost. We'll do it in this uh, purpley color here. All right, so I'll try to do this quicker. I'm going to drag in here. So uh, so here we got the first point. And then we go down to one. Then we go back to two. Then we go to th three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So now I've got my marginal curve, marginal cost curve here. Okay, and a couple things to notice here. Um, okay, so the marginal cost curve is always going to cross uh, the average total cost at its minimum. And, I, and and same with the average variable cost. Now, did I, did I draw that correctly? Yeah, it's pretty close. Uh, it's not perfect here. Um, it's pretty close here. Okay. In other words, as you go um, away, once the marginal cost is above the average variable cost, it'll start to bring up the average variable cost. In other words, it'll increase. Uh, and you can see when it's below, which is right here, it's going to be decreasing. Same thing up here, uh, when the marginal cost curve actually all the way up until right here. So 
the average total cost is above the marginal cost curve and the marginal and the average total costs are decreasing after that though you can see it starts to increase okay and that's because the additional costs are now higher than the average total cost and the average variable cost so something to something to look at there and think through um, finally the last reason the reason we care about this graph is um, well how much money are we making so let's say that the um, uh, they're in some kind of perfectly competitive market and the, the price of the good is 550 so we can actually figure out so if P equals 550 and I just have to sell everything at, at that 550 price uh, I can figure out how many I'll produce I'm gonna produce right up until um, the marginal benefit which in this case is gonna be price equals the marginal cost that's profit maximization so I'm gonna produce up to here I'm going to produce, uh, looks like, six, 65 units. Okay, so quantity in this example would be 65. Um, and I'm going to, I want to know the profit. Well, if I want to know the profit, I just follow it to where, how much is the average of producing 65 units? And so, uh, oops, just follow that over here. Whoops, let's use the straight line here. Okay, and that's going to be about, call that about three seventy-five. So it's going to cost three dollars and seventy-five cents each um, times sixty-five, and this will be my this will be my total cost to produce that. And then my profit is going to be the difference here, which is a uh, dollar. Uh, let's see. I said 550, so so we said 375. So I'm gonna do this on calculator. I'm tired. Um, minus 374. Oops. Oops. 0.75 there. Um, so it's a so I'm gonna make a buck 60 or buck 75 times 65. This will give me my uh, profit. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I was trying to figure out total revenue, um, I would then multiply 550 times 65. So you can punch those in the calculator. Uh, this video is a little longer than what I wanted. So that's an example. This is uh, how I derived these cost curves and then down here uh, how I graphed them and how I thought about them.